Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at a gaming laptop from Dell that might look like one we just looked at the other day, but this is actually different. This is called the Inspiron 15 5000. This is a gaming laptop that is powered by an AMD processor and GPU. So it's a completely AMD laptop. And I figured it'd be neat to look at this because we just looked recently at their Inspiron 7000 that had a new GTX 1050 chip from NVIDIA as well as an Intel processor. So we can see what the differences are here because there's a lot of overlap between these 5000 series laptops and their 7000 series laptops. And we'll be able to uh, make some recommendations, I think, by the time we're done with this video as to where you should spend your money. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of the full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. This goes for $799, and if you watch my other video of the uh, 7000 series, you'll notice that that is the same price, and uh, that 7000 series at the same price as this one performs better. So if you are looking to spend 800 bucks on a laptop and no more, uh, that other one that I review, which I'll link down below, uh, is the one to get. Now, the reason why we're reviewing this one, besides the fact that I bought it, is because there is a $650 configuration configuration of this with the same GPU on board that I think will perform uh, pretty well for the price. So uh, take a look at the graphic scores as we go through all the benchmarks and everything to uh, kind of gauge what you can expect out of that machine. It does have a slightly slower processor, but I think for the most part you will get a decent gaming laptop for 650. I just don't recommend uh, this hardware at the price point given some of the other options that are out there. So this has a, a AMD FX 9830P quad core CPU. It also has an AMD RX 460 GPU with four gigabytes of video RAM. Uh, this is not to be confused with the MacBook Pro's Radeon Pro 460, although I'm seeing very similar performance on some of my benchmark tests, which we'll take, we'll take a look at a little later in the review. Like the Inspiron 7000 series, it has a pretty lousy display. Uh, this is that 15.6 inch TN display that they put on their other laptop, not the uh, really nice IPS panel they had last year. So uh, really bad viewing angles on it. The color is very washed out, very cold display. I'm not a big fan of this, not too great at all. Uh, it does have a pretty nice keyboard and trackpad though, so those things are good on here. Uh, decent performance out of the click pad, pretty responsive, and the keyboard is nice to type on and uh, backlit with red backlighting. Now this one as configured has 12 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte spinning hard drive. On the extras channel, when we unboxed it, I took it apart. You can very easily upgrade the RAM as well as the hard drive, and there's an M2 SATA slot inside as well so you could slide in additional storage. So there is some easy upgradability. There's just a single panel here on the back you pop off and uh, you can go to town on it. As for ports, you got two USB 3.0 ports here on the left, a headset microphone port over there. On the other side, you've got a, a SD card reader, another USB 3 port, HDMI out, gigabit ethernet, and a Kensington lock built in. So a pretty basic configuration there. And the overall dimensions and weight uh, line up pretty closely with the Inspiron 7000 that we looked at just a couple of weeks ago. 5.43 pounds on this one. It's about two and a half kilograms, pretty much the same weight as the 7000 series, a little bit different, but about the same. Uh, and the battery life on this one is looking about the same as well, about uh, six or seven hours or so, as long as you're not gaming on it. Uh, once you start playing games and taxing that GPU, it'll start to uh, drain the battery faster. Uh, one thing of note is that the AMD processors themselves have better graphics performance than the Intel processors do. So you might be able to squeak out a little more gaming if you disable the discrete GPU on here because uh, the built-in CPU, they call it an APU in the AMD world, actually has decent graphics performance as, we, as we've seen in prior videos. So you might get a little battery, more battery life gaming on this thing, but uh, not a huge amount. And again, I don't think it's worth spending that much more money to get a hour, maybe less than an hour of extra battery life versus the Intel and NVIDIA versions. So that's the overall hardware. Let's take a look now and see how this performs against some of those other machines, some that actually cost the same amount of money from the same manufacturer. So the AMD processor in here seems to be performing just as well as some of the Intel chips we've looked at insofar as how it feels when you browse the web or watch YouTube videos and that kind of thing. So we've got my uh, 1080p 60 video here running and I was doing some tests earlier, did not see any drop frames, so it's able to keep up with uh, that kind of stuff quite well. So if you're watching a lot of 60 frames per second 1080p content, 
Uh, you shouldn't have any issues there. Uh, we'll jump over to the nasa.gov website like we usually do and take a look at what's going on there. Uh, this does have wireless AC on board in addition to Bluetooth, so you can get on your Wi-Fi network and connect your Bluetooth controllers up and everything. And uh, by and large, browsing the web will uh, feel pretty snappy and responsive, as I would hope a laptop would at this price point. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 66.21, and that puts it pretty far below, actually, the current generation i3 processor from Intel. Uh, so it gives you an idea as to where things kind of line up on this new chip. You may not notice it doing the things that you might be doing on the web, but uh, these benchmarks do have a way of giving us an idea as to how different processors perform when they're uh, placed under the kinds of loads that a high-end web task might take. Uh, but nonetheless, I didn't see anything here that would uh, make me want to not recommend this as a web browsing device. Uh, Microsoft Word here seems to perform adequately as well, a little slower than we've seen on some of the newer i5 chips, but uh, nonetheless, it is capable of doing the job here. So we can adjust our document here, move things around, and uh, no issues there. So if you're using this for homework, even some video editing, I think it'll be fine. Uh, but there are faster machines out there that cost the same money. All right, so let's jump into some gaming now. And I'm going to begin with GTA 5, which continues to be a pretty demanding game. And I want to point you to uh, what it's seeing for video memory right now. So it's reporting uh, one, uh, 512 megabytes of video memory available and uh, a gigabyte or so in use. However, uh, the onboard GPU on this one is actually running with four gigabytes of onboard video RAM. And when I went through some of my other diagnostic tools that I've, I've been running, it's actually got the video totals reversed between the discrete GPU and the internal one. And that was uh, causing some confusion there. Uh, you can see the rest of the settings that I have here on the screen. Uh, so there's definitely some driver issues going on with this. And unfortunately, you can't get your drivers from AMD. I tried to download some drivers using both their uh, automated tools as well as some manual downloads. And I could not get any driver package to work beyond what I got directly from Dell. And the Dell drivers are on version 16. Uh, the current version now is about, I think, up to 17. So uh, really a frustrating little bit of an experience with the drivers on this. And again, the video memory is issue might uh, impact some things. I had some issues with my benchmarking tools and a few other things where it was giving me warnings about the available video memory. Not seeing any real issues in game here though, as you can see. Uh, we're only getting about 35 frames per second or so with the settings that we have in place on this and a little bit of lag here and there as well. So not the best gaming experience on here. There's definitely a much better gaming experience to be had uh, when you're spending $799 on uh, that other version of this with the, uh, the NVIDIA hardware. And you can also see some delays here in the, uh, in the textures kind of rolling in as well. And this is the kind of glitchiness I've been seeing uh, with GTA 5 on this laptop. So really not a great experience here on a you know, real big AAA title. I would imagine there's some driver issues that might correct this, but at the moment, the only place you can get your drivers from is Dell, and the current version from Dell just doesn't seem to be working all that great. But other games seem to work better. This is the uh, new version of Doom here that we've been looking at a bit on some of these gaming reviews, and it seems to be running pretty snappy here, around 60 frames per second, depending on uh, what's happening in the world around us here. So I think you'll, you can expect some decent playable performance out of this title. Let me show you the uh, settings I have in place here as well, so you can get a feel for that. So we'll go over here to Advanced, and uh, you can see things are set pretty high on this one, so we could probably get a little better performance out of this if we wanted to, but uh, generally it seems to be working uh, quite well here with Doom. And one last game to take a look at, and that is Rocket League. You can see the settings that I have in place here. So I got everything cranked up just to see how well it does at full settings at 1080p. And uh, the good news is, is that it's staying comfortably ab above 60 frames per second. Generally, I'm seeing uh, frame rates in the uh, 60s to 70s here. So that's been pretty good, especially with high settings. So it looks like uh, Rocket League at least doesn't mind this AMD hardware and uh, we're not getting any graphical glitches or anything else like we saw with GTA 5. So uh, it seems like most of the games I'm, I'm testing with on here are working okay, but uh, the GTA 5 issue was one that uh, did concern me a bit, but other games seem to be working fairly well. So now I'm going to throw a couple of benchmarks at you on the 3D Mark test suite. Uh, the first one I want to look at is Time Spy, which runs in DirectX 12. And we can see there that the uh, Inspiron 7000 with the GTX 1050 and a quad core i5 chip uh, does edge out this one at the same price. So a little bit of a graphical bump on uh, the graphics side of things here. And the CPU seems to be much faster on the uh, Intel uh, i5 here than it is on this AMD FX uh, CPU. So a pretty big swing there uh, in speed. Now, if we go over to the other test that I ran, which is the CloudGate test, which is more of a low-end test, we got a score there of 9,998. 
and that does edge out the $500 Acer E15 that we looked at recently with a, a prior generation 940 MX GPU, but a current generation quad core i5 CPU. Uh, so you can see we're doing much better graphically, but on the CPU test, that dual core i5 uh, is edging out this quad core uh, AMD chip. So there's definitely some performance gains here on the KB Lake Intel processors that you're not going to see on the AMD side. So a little faster on the graphics versus a 1050, but I think a pretty big performance difference on the CPU. And that does line up with our web speedometer test we ran a little earlier in the video. Now in our Kodi test, I did notice that HEVC video does not play back very well on this AMD hardware. So we'll start off with our 140 megabits per second 4K file here. You can see it is unwatchable. I uh, just can't even keep up with it. And that's because these chips are not optimized in hardware to decode uh, this kind of video. But even if I go down to a 1080p video at 60 megabits per second, uh, this one is equally unwatchable. It does start off a little better, but uh, we get a ton of skip frames here, as you can see there on the uh, little screen that popped up. So we're not getting great performance here on HEVC video. Uh, if you did uh, go up to an i5 KB Lake processor, like the one that's in the $800 uh, Intel version, uh, you will not see what you just saw here. Those videos will play back just perfectly fine because the hardware is optimized for that kind of thing. Uh, here you're going to get a lot of skipped and dropped frames in HEVC. Uh, the good news is though that if you're playing back a lot of Blu-ray content, like if you've got MKV files and that kind of thing, uh, you won't see too many issues. It glitches out a little bit when it starts here, but uh, once it gets going, I'm not seeing any other issues after that. Uh, as far as heat dissipation goes, this one does okay. I ran the uh, 3D Mark stress test and I got a score of 98.6%, which is a passing mark. So provided you keep those vents clear on here, uh, the fans will be able to keep this thing cool even under load. Uh, the fans do get pretty noisy, but uh, not you know, unreasonably so for a laptop. So I think you will get some fan noise when you're playing games on it, but uh, I've, I've not heard uh, anything worse than this one. It's about where I've seen other laptops perform on this front. So where are we at on this? Well, I think if you're spending $650 and getting the GPU that you just saw in this one, that's a pretty good deal. If you're spending $800 and you have the choice between this one and uh, the Inspiron 7000, even though you're getting a little less RAM in that Inspiron 7000, it's uh, eight gigabytes on that one versus 12 on this one. Uh, you will see better performance, slightly better on the GPU and much better on the CPU uh, for the same money. And I really would recommend you go in that direction if you're going to be spending $800. But at $650, the GPU in here I think is a pretty good deal for a low-end laptop and uh, worthy of consideration, especially the performance bump you get over something that you might spend $500 on. So you can see really the incrementals here. Uh, the biggest problem though is the display. The display on most of the low-end Dells is pretty lousy and uh, especially Especially when you compare it to what they had on the low-end gaming laptops last year. This is a step backwards and probably where they're realizing a bulk of their profit margin. So it's not bad when you're looking at it for a while, but when you see a lot of displays come through like I do, uh, this one definitely is on the low end of the spectrum versus some of the nicer ones that we've seen lately. So uh, that is the one thing you need to be aware of when you're spending a little bit from Dell on a laptop is that front. So 800 bucks go with the uh, Inspiron 7000. If you're looking at 650, I think this AMD one might be a pretty good value. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.